grandfather Ali Kamal was born in 1869 in Istanbul, then the capital of the Ottoman Empire. Ruled by powerful sultans, the once mighty empire was now in decline, but it remained a force to be reckoned with. The Istanbul of Ali Kamal's childhood was a vibrant cosmopolitan city. Lots of traditional Turkish geezers doing their thing. Watch out there. Boris still has relatives living in the city. He's on his way to meet his cousin Sinan, a grandson of Ali Kamal. Excuse me. Kirasti. Kirasti missed it, okay. He's hoping Sinan will be able to tell him about Ali Kamal's early life. Maybe it's a maybe this is the Kirasti missed it. Sinan. <laughs> You, you made it. Yeah. Lovely to see you. Oh, you know, listen, Sinan, why have we, did you ask me to come to Kirashli Mischik, okay? My grandfather, your great-grandfather, Ali Kemal, was born somewhere in Syria. He was born somewhere, right? Somewhere. So he lived here for a while? He spent most of his childhood here. Right? We don't know exactly which building it was no, in. No, somewhere in the Syria. Ali Kemal's father was a wealthy merchant who gave his son a traditional Muslim education. He went to a, a Quranic school, right? And uh, uh, the curriculum consisted in memorizing the Quran, the whole Quran, the whole, the whole Quran, which is quite a feat. At a, when it comes to this, that he was aged six. Huh? And which language was this in? In, in Arabic. Hey, here's the incredible thing: my great grandfather Ali Kemal could not only read this whole thing, but he actually knew it all off by heart. It's amazing. I, I won the Scripture Knowledge Prize, haven't you? No. Well, that's what it is. Yeah, certainly. And the Wilder Divinity Prize. Ali Kamal's life didn't continue in a traditional vein. As a young man, he travelled to France and became a successful journalist. In 1903, he married Winifred Brune, daughter of Margaret Johnson. Three years later, Winifred and Ali had a daughter, Selma. Then, in 1908, at the age of 40, Ali Kemal returned to Turkey, bringing his family with him. They settled in the village of Bebek, just outside Istanbul. Boris knows that on his return to Turkey, Ali Kemal continued his career as a journalist. Hi. Ben, how are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. We're going to go to the library. Eventually. He's meeting up with historian Ben Fortner. As a journalist himself, Boris is keen to see some of the newspaper articles his great-grandfather wrote. Ben's taking him to the library where the originals are kept. So, Ben, what is this? You can, you can, you can read this stuff, can you? Yes. Uh, this is the original copy of the newspaper that your great-grandfather wrote for. It's called Ikdam. Ikdam. And your great-grandfather, he's the lead columnist. Okay. Let's say, is that, that the right term? Okay. And this is starting here running down two and a half columns, and there is your great-grandfather's signature. No, okay, that's his byline. Up. That's his byline. Oh, amazing. So that's the prime real estate on the newspaper. And it's political? Yes. Yeah. Okay. It was political, dangerously political. A few weeks after Ali Kemal's return, there was a revolution in Turkey. In the name of liberty, radical nationalists seized power from the autocratic sultan. But soon, the revolutionaries began to use repressive tactics of their own, including political murder. Appalled by this and convinced there were better ways to bring about change, Ali Kemal used his newspaper columns to speak out against the new nationalist government. The, the contradiction that, that the revolution was, was waged, was carried out in the name of liberty, but yet liberty is being, in his view, uh, sacrificed or or put on the back burner. Mm -hmm. Force and pressure cannot exist in a constitutional era, whereas we try to do everything by force and pressure. So he's, he's being critical of the government. He's being critical of the society for relying on brute strength when, according to him, ideas, consensus should carry the day. Ali Kemal was running real risks by speaking out. There were ominous signs that the